Welcome back to yet another edition of Learning Simplified. This is a very interesting session in which we understand how core banking connects to SWIFT Alliance. You know that core banking generates a lot of messages, payment and non-payment, MT and MX. So how do they get delivered to the SWIFT network? That's the question which we are trying to resolve in today's session. Now SwiftNet is an IP based messaging platform. It provides three categories of exchange services. So before we go to the technical aspect of the communication, we need to understand what are these three categories of exchange services. This slide gives you a clear idea of what are the different message services. The first is the most common FIN service. The FIN service is nothing but our good old MT standard messages, the MT103202s. The second service is the Interact. Under Interact, you have the Swift MX message, which is the ISO 20022, which the world is transitioning to. The third one is the File Act. The lesser known File Act is nothing but a file transfer mechanism. This enables financial institutions to transfer files in a secure and reliable manner. These files could be for an ACH, it could be for bulk payment processing, transmission of check images, or central bank reporting. It supports any character set, but up to 250 MB. And then finally, we have a browse feature, which enables the end users of the bank to log into a portal using a web-based browser and then search for data, look up for data on the SWIFT network. So primarily, we are looking at three services, the FIN, the MT, Interact for MX, and the File Act for bulk file exchanges. The FIN and the Interact have these kind of features. Closed user group. What it means is that these messages is controlled for compliance with the predefined message exchange and closed user group rules. It determines which user can send what type of messages. RMA is something which you might have heard about in another video of the series. If the message is non-compliant, it will not be delivered. All messages are centrally validated with a wide range of SWIFT MTMX rules, which are used across a broad range of business areas within the financial services industry. Third, very important is non-repudiation. What it means is that in case of a dispute between two institutes, SWIFT is able to confirm that a message exchange did or did not take place as claimed. And of course, the most important one is the SwiftNet PKI security. It takes care of authentication, encryption, and integrity control. So SWIFT provides for its own public and private key infrastructure for encryption. Last but not the least is a very interesting store and forward feature. What it means is that when a message is delivered from one financial institution, it goes to the SWIFT Alliance, and SWIFT Alliance stores it if the other institute is not online. Once the other institute's network comes online, it forwards the message. So no messages are lost because of this store and forward feature. Another interesting thing which you would have learned in another video of this series is this SIF fin copy rules. The fin copy could be in Y copy or in T copy. The Y copy is generally used for RTGS, domestic RTGS, wherein a copy of the message is generated by the, the messaging service of SWIFT. It delivers it to a monitoring service, could be the central bank of the country. It authorizes it and then forwards it to the receiver. Or it could be a T copy as well. So now coming back to how technically does it happen? How does the message exchange happen for these three services? First, we have something known as the Alliance Gateway. It uses a messaging hub called MQHA, 
which is the WebSphere, IBM WebSphere MQ host adapter. So using a series of queues, messages are transformed from a transfer from the core banking to the SIFT alliance. Or if it becomes complicated, you can outsource it to the SIFT bureau. And now we have this alliance cloud as a third option. So let's look at this alliance gateway. What, what does it mean, SIFT alliance? So to just to break it up, before we go to deeper into this communication layer, one must understand the SIFT message doesn't directly go from the core banking to the network. It goes through additional scrutiny of a user who sits in front of a terminal which authorizes the message before it goes out. Deeper into this, you will see that from the end user or from the core banking application, it goes to a messaging software. Now this messaging software is the Alliance Access. The Alliance Access is an important component, which is the MQHA comprising of an IBM MQ, which does the message communication. Then you have the Alliance Gateway. Now Alliance Gateway acts as a funnel to the endpoint, the SIFT net. So Alliance Gateway takes care of the security. It is the one which protects you the messaging software from the external network. So it is in the demilitarized zone. And finally, you have a client network software known as the SwiftNet link, which is the final point before it goes out to the external SwiftNet network. So you can imagine the number of components which are there on the customer's side. That's why some of the banks, the mid-size and the smaller banks, they outsource these three components to a Swift bureau. So there are well-known bureaus which take up this work, freeing up the bank in its other core competencies. So hope this has been a session to understand what are the different SWIFT messaging services and how the connection happens, the difference between a SWIFT alliance access and a SWIFT gateway. So in the next session, we are going to understand more about the paint format messages. Till then, thank you.